Let's ascend and descend by adding spheres and slabs to Minecraft. Let's see how to do that. Alright, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more and in this tutorial we're going to add stairs and slabs to the game. And it's actually fairly straightforward. There's a couple of things that you will have to keep in mind, but I'm sure that we will manage. So to add stairs, first of all we're going to copy the ruby block here and we're going to paste it twice. So the first one is going to be the ruby stairs and the second one is going to be the ruby slab. Of course don't forget to change the name here as well, that's very important. So ruby stairs and ruby slab. There you go. Now for the ruby slab, this is simply a slab block. As you can see, very easy and actually doesn't require us to change anything. However, the issue is if we say, well, this is a stairs block, you will see that we will get an error because if I middle mouse button click on the stairs block, the constructor here is protected. Therefore, we can't use it outside of this or derived classes. So we actually will need to make a custom stairs class. So in our custom package, right click new Java class, we're going to call this the mod stairs block. And this is going to extends stairs block. If we hover over this and create constructor matching super, then we get this constructor. And here we need to change this to public. And now we can access the mod stairs constructor. And we're simply going to change the stairs block here to mod stairs block like this. And then we have to import it, pressing Alt Enter, and then this gets imported. The first parameter is actually the actual block that it's made out of. So this has to be mod blocks dot ruby block dot get default state, and then a comma, and there you go. So let's format this a little bit differently. And now the two blocks are actually in game already. However, of course, the main thing, and this is the thing for the stairs, the slabs, and, and all of the other non block blocks, as I like to call them, is going to be the JSON files. Those are really the bulk of the work here. So I'm going to copy those over and those are of course available to you in the description below either in the GitHub repository or as individual gists you can also get them. So if we take a look at those the slab is actually fairly straightforward. We have three different variants of the slab. You can either put it at the bottom half of a block at the top half of a block or you could put two slabs on top of each other and that will just simply turn into a normal ruby block in this case. Now the stairs however if we take a look at those those are far more complex as you can clearly see there's a lot going on here. We're not going to go into too much detail. The idea is just we have these three variables as you can see facing, half and shape. The idea is that those change depending on where you are placing the block. So first of all the facing simply means that if I'm facing east then the model will display in a different way than I'm facing north, south or west. That's the simply the rotation of the actual stairs that should be fairly sensible half simply means whether or not I placed the stairs on the bottom half or the top half and they of course also rotate by 90 degrees and the shape simply means that if I have different stairs next to each other I have stairs that are rotated 90 degrees then the shape of the stairs changes to either inner stairs or outer stairs you've probably seen this all as well and you sort of intuitively understand that when you are placing downstairs, this is basically how the stairs are actually being displayed differently. So depending on what the variables are, this points to a different model and it gets rotated here. So those are the two main things. If you ever want to change this, you can simply select the mod ID, press Control R and then change the mod ID to your mod ID and simply replace all. And then same with this, I advise to simply select the Ruby here, then Control R and then change this, replace all. And that's the way you can use that fairly easily. Definitely never type this out because that's ludicrous, genuinely. Right, moving on to the block models. There are five files which we're going to take a look at. Now they are actually all fairly similar and all actually not that interesting. There are simply different textures. As you can see, there's a bottom texture, a top texture and a side texture. Now in our case, this is all going to be the same block texture. So all of them point to the same Ruby block texture. The interesting thing is the parent. So as you can see for the Ruby slab, the parent is simply block slash slab. For Ruby top slab, the parent is slab underscore top and the textures stay exactly the same. Same goes for the stairs. The textures here all stay the same, only the parent changes. So this is going to be stairs. For the stairs inner, it's going to be inner underscore stairs. And for the stairs outer, it's going to be outer underscore stairs. And the parent basically controls how the 3D model should look like. That's why this changes. Right, let's also add the item models here. As you can see, they simply point to the normal block models. So the Ruby slab and to the Ruby stairs model should be fairly self-explanatory. We actually don't need to add any textures to it because we take the texture from the ruby block right last but not least let's not forget to add this to the en underscore us json file for the translation and apart from that that's actually it we simply need the json files with the correct names here 
and then let's see if it works. Or if I was back in Minecraft once more, and as you can see, these stairs and the slabs have been added to the game. And as you can see in whatever direction I put them in, they all work and they all look really nice. So as you can see, this is uh, how easy it can be. The main thing, the main bulk of the work really for the stairs and the slabs and most of the, these non-block blocks are really the JSON files. But like I've already mentioned, I really advise you to either download those from my GitHub repository or from the vanilla assets folder because that's really the easiest thing that you can do. Right, but that will be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. So yeah.